Welcome everybody. Welcome to this channel. This is the first video I've ever made on this channel. My name is Kai. Some of you might already know me, however, as the music producer Artifacts. I make drum and bass music on a different YouTube channel, actually, um, that has about 70,000 subscribers, I think, right now. And I do weekly live streams about music production, so if you're interested in music, then check that channel out. I'll link it in the sidebar of this channel. Now, when I grew up, I played a lot of games such as SimCity, Rollercoaster Tycoon, and just games like that. I always had, uh, well, I've always been a creative person, I love to draw, um, did a lot of stuff like photography, and of course music production as well, being another creative thing that I do. And therefore I love playing games that allow me to also be creative. SimCity was one of those games, and I used to love it as a, as a child. And I did quite lose touch with video games for a really long time. I, I don't think I played video games for about 10 years when I got back into video games about two and a half years ago. And that's when I found out about this game called City Skylines and I really loved it right off the bat. And I knew that I was going to make videos about it at some point, but I hadn't made videos about video games ever. And I also hadn't played games for a really long time. And I also never modded the game. So for me it was just basically I got into something that I had never done before. So it, it took me some time to get used to everything. I had a lot of problems with modding, uh, of course, like save games breaking because of broken mods. And I had to learn a lot about how this all works. But about two and a half years later now and I really, really enjoy what I'm doing. And I kind of just want to showcase the stuff that I'm building. So welcome. This is the city of Atsuki. As you can guess from the title, it's going to be a Japanese city. Now, the name Otsuki is a fictional name. Um, I did take it from uh, Google, however, but it is a name that, uh, you know, it, it, it's a really small piece of land in Japan. It, there's no real cities there. It's just a small piece of land. And I saw the name on Google Maps and I thought, yeah, that's a cool name for a city. Um, I, I really spent a lot of time thinking about a realistic city name and learn a lot about how Japanese cities are named but I just couldn't come up with something that was well that made me made me think like yeah that is a good name for this series so I just started browsing around Google Maps and I eventually found the name Otsuki and I thought yeah that, that, it, it's short it has a good ring to it and I just thought let's just do it so I'm gonna be working on this and I uh, as you can see already I, I build really detailed so I'm gonna try and make this look as realistic as possible however I don't speak or read Japanese so there's gonna be moments in this series well when I'll probably use an asset most likely stuff like billboards or traffic signs that have Japanese characters on them Japanese writing and you'll probably see a couple of moments in this series when I'll use an asset incorrectly and if that happens, then please let me know and I'll try and fix it if I still can. But that's also sometimes a problem because sometimes fixing something in an already built up area is just not possible without just demolishing everything that's already there. Um, and it's usually because I built so detailed. It, there's just so many things in one spot. Just like right now, like all those grass assets there, they're probably not needed, you know. But I like building really detailed. My computer can handle it. So yeah, that's what I do. Now, as I said, this is going to be a Japanese city, and I'm uh, really going to go for the Japanese aesthetic. That's what I want to do. I really want to make a city that gets that dense Japanese kind of feeling. So I'm mostly going to be inspired by Tokyo. Um, I'll probably also have myself be inspired by other places in Japan. If you know some place in Japan that you think would be really cool to see somebody build in City Skylines, then definitely let me know in the comments, because I'm really looking forward to just checking out different places that I could probably have myself be inspired by. Let me just talk a little bit about what's happening on the screen because you saw me just making the train station and you saw me making the little crossing there. Now, I really tried for quite a bit to make the crossing functional. I have the um, mod for Japanese uh, railway crossings and for some reason it just didn't work. Every time I placed one of the Japanese roads, it would either not place the crossings at all or it would just you know, it wouldn't place the props for the crossing, or sometimes it would glitch a lot. Then with other Japanese roads, it would place the crossings twice. So I didn't really understand it, and then I thought, well, maybe I should just get rid of that mod and try and use the Japanese railway crossings that come with the railway collection, the railway replacer mod. And I did that, but it also didn't work well. 
So I couldn't make the crossing functional. So I decided to just go for, well, one that is not functional and just is there for aesthetics. So there's going to be like closed railway barriers there for the crossing and you'll every now and then see a car just passing through, you know, the beam that's closed. But, you know, that's, yeah, that's the best I can do. So I'm really just going for that Japanese aesthetic with this series. And I kind of started this series earlier already and I started over again a couple of times. And the main reason for that is, is while I, like I, I said, I've never made content about video games before. And again, talking about the topic, this is actually really awkward what I'm doing right now because I'm watching my own video that I've just spent hours working on and doing commentary. I've never done that before. When I do the videos on my music production channel, I basically just wing it. I just hit record, do whatever I want to do and what I want to teach people. And uh, at the same time, I just say what I'm doing. So I just speak out loud what I'm thinking. And that's a lot easier than doing this right now, because now I'm just kind of having to tell what I'm doing on the screen, but I'm not doing it at the moment I'm actually talking about it, which makes it, I don't know. I'm not sure yet how much commentary there's going to be in these videos, and I might just, in future videos, put a lot more music and a lot less commentary. I'm not sure yet. But, um, yeah, I guess you guys can let me know in the comments what you want me to do. What do you like? Do you like videos with a lot of commentary? Do you like it when there's more music involved? Would you like me to put some of my own music in the background, for instance? That would be nice as well. Um, or just have music altogether. I could do that as well without any commentary or just a really short amount of commentary. Not sure. But for now, this works. I'll just try doing as much commentary as I can, unle unless you guys really say that you don't like it. Yeah, about that, that Japanese railway crossing, and like I said, I'm, I'm, I couldn't make it work, so it's just non-functional right now, but um, if you know how to make it work, and if you know, like, I had a problem, and that was, uh, I cut it out in this, uh, in, in, the, in the gameplay footage, but I had a problem, and that was when I placed the crossing on a road that actually worked with the railway, uh, the, the Japanese railway crossing mod. What happened is it actually showed up the barriers twice instead of once. So, well, you would get two barriers, one on either side of the, of the crossing, but it would place two barriers on either side. So I would have four barriers in total and it would, well, it looked really weird. So I'm not sure why that's happening. And I tried all the different various Japanese roads that are made by Kano Model. And for some reason, none of them seem to work. So it's really a big shame because it would be really nice to see the Japanese railway crossings and then just see the barriers close when the train actually comes. But for some reason, I couldn't make it work. Well, I could... The barriers showed up, but just too many of them. So, yeah, I cut it out. But if you know why that happens, and if you know how to fix it, then um, let me know in the comments, because I would really like to know, and I would really like it to be an actual functional crossing. Um, that's one thing that I really like. I, I play this game really detailed, and therefore not everything... Well, I don't really play the game as it's normally intended in the vanilla way. Like, well, you can probably imagine. I still like it, though, when a lot of my city still functions. And therefore, I do have to do quite a bit of hacks. Like, things like placing roads through buildings or stuff like that. Just to make it all work. Um, and sometimes it's not, like, really functional. But it still looks like it's functioning. So sometimes I'll have maybe one building that'll turn into a procedural object. Which completely takes away the function of the building, right? Um, and then I'll place a smaller building inside of it, or maybe place one of the service blocks inside of it that somebody made and placed on the workshop, just to make it look functional. And yeah, I really like it like that, but I also have to think about a couple of things. And one of those things is the limits in the game. Now, I'm already going to tell you right, right off the bat, I'm not going to be able to make a city as big as Tokyo. I wanted to do that at first, and that's kind of like the intention I had at first. But I really quickly realized that Tokyo is so big that there's no chance I'm going to be able to fit that into a city skylines map. Uh, the original idea actually was to make a recreation of Tokyo. But that's not going to happen. In fact, Tokyo is so big that it's bigger than an 81 tile city, city skylines map. So, yeah, no, no, no shot. That's just not going to happen. I then thought, well, I'm just going to make a big, big, dense Japanese city. And I started working on a series um, which actually was going to be this city. It's, it was going to be Otsuki. After about, like, 
I think it was, I, I recorded about two or three episodes. I really noticed when I was looking at the limits, I was not going to be able to make the city as big as I thought I was going to be able to make it. So a lot of the things that I already built were actually way too big in terms of scale. And I just was not going to be able to pull off what I was, well, what I was planning to do. So I had to restart again and I had to basically uh, restart and build everything a little bit smaller. So I'm going to go for a city that looks like Tokyo and it looks like that really dense Tokyo kind of feeling that you get. And what we're working on right now is actually more like a little outer town that's like, or like a town on the edge of the city. So if you know something about Tokyo, Tokyo, it is one city, right? But it didn't used to be like that. Tokyo actually used to be a whole variety of smaller cities, which are now the districts. So now you have districts like Shibuya, Shinjuku, and those used to be cities on its own. So if you go on the map of Tokyo, you'll actually see on Google Maps that a lot of these places are still called Shibuya City, Shinjuku City, or um, Chiyoda City, which is where the, the, the Imperial Palace is. These grew and then eventually joined up into one bigger city called Tokyo. Now, I'm going to try and get like that same kind of vibe. So what I'm going to try and do is have a really dense city center. Sadly enough, that's not going to be as big as Tokyo. So what I really would like is to have just a city with a good amount of skyscrapers in the center, maybe even a couple of different clusters situated around the, the major train stations in the city that have skyscrapers around them and then all the way around that just a sea of mid-rise and, and and well maybe some high rise here and there as well and then really far away from that you'll go into like the suburbs and the smaller low residential houses but i was just not going to be able to do it that big as i thought i was going to be able to do it so we're going to make it we're basically all going to confine it into a smaller space but still going to go for that same sort of like visual kind of aspect as what you would expect from a city like Tokyo. So, like I said, Tokyo is the main inspiration, but I'm also taking inspiration from some other various cities, so maybe something like Osaka, or maybe also Kyoto, or other smaller towns in Japan. Like, if you know some place in Japan that you really like, and that you would think, like, well, it would fit great, because I'm not just, I'm not limiting myself by being inspired by Tokyo alone. Um, and I'm not also not really copying Tokyo. Um, the version of the series that I made before this one, um, the one that I realized was just way too big in terms of scale, it also didn't really look the way I... I didn't like the way it turned out. Um, that's also a, a good reason why I decided to restart again. It looked too much like Tokyo. I was just copying Tokyo by just... Well, I, I thought I was letting myself be inspired by it, but in fact, I was just copying the layout of downtown Tokyo. And by the time I had a couple of episodes, I realized like, yeah, this actually just looks like Tokyo. And that's not what I want. So, yeah, this time around, I'm going to make it better. I'm going to do it different. And I'm just letting my inspiration run wild and just using all the Japanese assets and uh, making it look nice and how I think it looks still realistically Japanese. Right now, you can see I'm working on this little shrine, little temple with these, uh, well, basically a little cemetery around it. And I'm really playing with a very tiny, it's not that big, but I'm playing with a height difference here. So the train station sits lower in elevation than the, well, the shrine on this side. And on the other side, some of the houses are also elevated up a little bit. So if you look at the train station from street level, you can actually see that there's like a couple of meters of height difference between some of the buildings and some of the streets. And that really creates a very nice, very nice look. Like it just makes it all look so much more realistic. And you'll see that in the cinematics at the end of this episode. I'll try and include some of those shots where you can really clearly see that. Um, I thought it turned out great. It, it's something that I didn't do with the previous version of the series that I started, and I noticed that. So I, I really also, well, basically told myself, I gotta remember, play around with height differences a bit. Now, talking about height differences, the map I'm currently using is basically a flat map. I just took one of the most flattest maps I could find on the workshop, and I opened that, 
and that's what I started off with. There's one river running through the map somewhere on, uh, off on the side that I made just for some of the services like sewage and stuff like that. And um, other than that, I didn't do any terraforming, so it's mostly just a huge flat plane. So I think somewhere a few episodes into the series, we're going to do an episode fully devoted to terraforming the land. The main reason why I didn't terraform already is because I didn't really know what the placement of the city was going to be, where I'm going to place the city center, where do I want to place the harbor, where do I want to place other various key spots in the city. I, I had no clue yet, and I also didn't really know how to start. So I just thought out, let's just start building a city somewhere, or like a small suburb somewhere on the edge of the map. It's not really on the edge, but it's sort of like if you envision, I, I guess, the 25 tile area, um, and then just on the edge of that. That's about where I'm building right now. Um, and then I'm just going to work on the central station in the next episode. And then I really have kind of like a clue as to where a couple of the spots go in the city. I can kind of visualize where all the train lines are going to run. And then we're going to go into working on the, on the terraforming and making it all look nice. And um, probably creating some mountain backdrops, stuff like that. I think that would be nice to have a really dense city center. And then when you look towards the horizon, see some mountains behind it. Maybe I'll even place Mount Fuji on the horizon, because somebody released Mount Fuji on the workshop, which is great. Um, it's a really good asset, by the way. I used it in the previous recordings of the uh, series that I made, that I, well, ended up not using, but it looks awesome. It looks awesome, so we'll probably end up doing that. Now, in this episode, yeah, I, I, I really don't know what to talk about. I can talk about what's happening on the screen, but you can kind of see it yourself. I'm just placing these residential houses, and I'm, I'm really just filling up this area. Um, yeah, maybe I should just say a little bit more about myself. I'm uh, Dutch, by the way, if you hadn't already noticed from my accent. Well, I mean, I hope my accent is not too horrible. I have quite a bit of experience talking in English to people. Um, like I said, I, ma I make music production content usually on a different channel, usually live streams, but I also have done a lot of tutorials in the past. And currently I'm working on music, so I don't really do too many tutorials on that channel at the moment. And I'm ju I just do a weekly live stream every week where you can sit down and tune in and see me watch Make Music Live. So if you're into that, then uh, you can tune in to my other channel on uh, Friday, every Friday at about 8 p.m., Amsterdam time. That's when I do these live streams. Um, it's actually really fun just having a community and talking to people about making music. And yeah, I like it. It's I, I hope actually that this channel is going to give me a similar kind of community where people are just going to, well, I guess be interested in my, in my content and come back every week. That would be great. Well, I say every week, but to be honest, I don't really have a schedule for these videos. Um, this is my second channel, and it's not my main focus, so I might not be able to keep regular upload schedule on this channel. The main reason for that is, is that I have my other channel, which is more important, and I also have a lot of work that is music production related, like I do, um, I do teaching, I, uh, for instance, I give lessons to people if they want. Not that many at the moment, but I also do a lot of projects, you know, like helping people make their tracks sound better. Um, so that's a lot more important. And um, that also means that I might not be able to keep up with a regular upload schedule on this channel. And I just not always have time to play this game. So sometimes I'm just too occupied working on music. If I have, you know, not everybody is an artist, but if you're an artist yourself, and doesn't really matter what kind of art, you really understand very well that to make art you need to have inspiration and you need to have creativity and sometimes creativity is something you cannot always force sometimes inspiration just has to come to you naturally and when you force it it just doesn't work so when i have a moment when i'm super inspired then that's usually when i'm going to be working on music and i'm not going to be working on anything else because i need to utilize those moments when i have a lot of inspiration and the same thing goes for making City Skylines videos. I need to be inspired to work on this. I need to feel like working on making these videos. And therefore, I don't want to do a schedule right now. That might change in the future if this really kicks off and if this really ends up going very well, then I might change that. But for now, I think it would be nice to just upload whenever I feel like uploading, whenever I have time to make one of these episodes and then I'll upload it. And you can always follow me on Twitter. You can 
subscribe to this channel and then uh, click the bell notification icon to get notified whenever I do a video, whenever I post one. So let me know in the comments if you think that's nice, if you um, or if you want me to do a regular upload schedule. Let me know what you think I should do. Um, I think this is going to work out fine for now. Um, like I said, this this channel has no subscribers right now. This is really the first video on this channel. And I don't really know what this is going to do. I don't know what this channel is going to end up be like. I hope it's going to be fun. I hope it's going to be a long running thing. And that people are going to love this. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I really don't. Right now, I'm uh, just basically working on expanding this thing. We've built quite a bit of residential and now we needed a good amount of uh, commercial right here. So we have a main street that's a little bit wider than the rest. And on here, I just placed a few Japanese shops, a little bit of parking area. And then around that, it's just going to be a lot more low density residential. So that's just going to be most of this episode basically is low density residential. One thing I was really paying a lot of attention to at this point, you can kind of see it probably um, uh, from the way I'm placing these roads down, is I'm not trying to go for a grid and I'm really trying to make these roads flow in a natural way that looks like a Japanese city. You know, if you look at Japanese cities, especially like low density residential areas, it's a lot of times very very freeform based like the roads go in almost seemingly random directions um there are of course also exceptions there are areas low density residential areas in japan that are really grid heavy but most of the time they're not most of the times these roads especially in areas with height differences they usually just follow the terrain they go crisscross through each other there's little back alleys and all kinds of well, tiny spots, and, and that's really the kind of vibe that I want to create with this series. You'll see in the next episode, when we'll make the central train station, how crazy it's going to get, because it's really going to get crazy, and that's also a thing I have to kind of worry about, that I don't go too crazy, because there's limits in this game. For a long time, the limit I was mostly worried about was the prop limit. The prop limit is one of those limits I used to be really worried about when I played this game. But since the new Move It update, um, and we can now convert things to procedural objects using Move It after you've already placed them down, that allows you to basically not have to worry about the prop limit. So I try and convert as many props as possible to to, P, to procedural objects. Only props that are terrain conforming are not converted, or props that sometimes have like lights on them, um, because sometimes it'll delete the lights if you do, uh, or if you convert it to a procedural object, so that's not really ideal either. But basically anything I can convert, I'll convert to a procedural object to save up on the prop count. And that means I don't really have to worry about the prop limit anymore. But there's other limits in this game that I now have to worry about instead. The one I really have to worry about the most, and that's something I noticed pretty damn quickly, is the note and segment limit. The note and segment limit is basically every time you place down a road, you, or like one stretch of road, you'll create two notes and one segment. Those all add up, but it's not just roads. If you use a network wall, for instance, or any type of network, like a, a, a key, or any, th any type of network, like railway tracks, um, highways, fences, um, guardrail networks, you know, these, um, um, how do you call them, these theme surface networks, like the, the, the pavement network and the asphalt networks, those all add up 
to the node and segment limit. So I have to try not use as many networks and I'll I'll favor using props and using prop line tool instead of using a network because yeah, it oh by the way, this is a really cool looking shot. Yeah. <laughs> I made it and I was so happy with that. But yeah, like I said, I, I really should not use that many that many networks because that that is really gonna gonna well basically limit me in making this city as big as I want. So I'll favor using props over networks and save the networks for the actual roads instead. So that's the main limit I'm worried about. And I don't think I have to worry about too many other limits. I don't think so. I think that's mostly the limit I have to worry about. But it's still one that, that really matters. Because if I've used too many nodes and segments, that means we cannot expand any more, any more further. So yeah, I already have other ideas for City Skylines videos, for future videos. Um, for now, I should basically focus on this series because this is the first series that I'm doing. And I'm, I, I, like I said, I'm just getting started. I should not think too much about other series or stuff like that right now, but I have some ideas for series in the future. One in particular, which I think is going to be really fun because it's something I've never see, seen somebody do. I've seen a couple of really original cities in the past. Um, one of them would be Avalon. I really loved Avalon. It was a great city and it. I loved like cyberpunk and, and uh, science fiction stuff. And I love reading those kind of books and, 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 and comics and stuff. So yeah, cyberpunk cities, that was great. Um, I actually thought that that was going to be my first series. I had that idea as well, but I didn't really end up doing that. And I ended up settling for a realistic looking Japanese city, which is one of the other ideas that I had. But another one that I really liked recently is, of course, the Mars series by City Walk City Wall. Um, City Walk City Wall, um, he, he and me actually were in touch um, during the time I was working on the first version of the Otsuki series that I an actually ended up restarting now. I talked to him about it. Um, he was doing his Japanese series and I was already working on the Otsuki series at that point. And um, I was going to release it during the same time he was doing his Kobayashi Island series. I ended up not doing it for, well, various reasons. And I think it's only better that I didn't do that. I think his series, his Japanese series is, is, is done at this point. I don't think he's going to work on that series anymore. Forgive me if I'm wrong, though. Maybe he plans on actually continuing that series more in the future. But right now, it just looks like he's so occupied with his Mars series. And I totally, totally understand it. That series is absolutely insane. It's probably the best series I've ever seen. He and me actually were in touch, and um, he asked me for some feedback when he was working on it. He wasn't sure if, it's, if it was going to be fun. I told him, dude, do it. This is going to be insane. And he did it, and... Ever since, he's been growing rapidly, so man, I'm so happy for him. He, it's great. It's, it's good. It's really nice to see other people get that much bigger in this community, and I hope I can be part of it. So, just now, I, I talked for 30 minutes, and that's already the end of the episode, so I hope you liked it. And um, we're going to go into these final cinematics right now, and yeah, let's just hope that this is going to be a start of something great. I am going to see you back in the next video. Peace.